Uh, we are sorry for the technical issue earlier, uh, so we're going to begin again. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, very warm welcome and thank you for attending this uh, investor briefing. My name is Mbogo Masharia, uh, the Web and Digital Manager, and I'll be UMC for today. Right. Uh, so, allow me to members of the Executive Management Committee present in the, in the briefing uh, today. So, we have Arthur Oginga, the Group Chief Executive Officer. Uh, we have Arnold Dipenar, our Group Chief Financial Officer. Uh, we have Nkirote Mwarenjiru, the Group Company Secretary and Legal Counsel. We have David Kuria, Managing Director, Insurance Business Kenya. And we have Jerry Motieno, our Group Managing Director, Life Business. Uh, we also have the wider leadership team from East Africa joining us remotely. I now hand, hand over to Arthur to take us through the briefing. Arthur. Good morning, ladies and gent gentlemen. Welcome to the UAP All Mutual Investor presentation of the 2020 results. As we have previously mentioned, our strategy is founded on three things. Building a, one, building a strong foundation for growth, customers being at the center of what we do, and building for the future by investing in digital platforms. On the foundations front, our focus has been on strengthening our balance sheet and focusing on development of our core businesses. A lot of progress has been made on the property businesses, which I will talk to later in, in my slides. Coupled with that, we are close to finalizing work on restructuring our debt to align it to the profile of our cash flows, both in terms of duration as well as currency. We are also at the tail end of the merger of our life businesses with only regulatory approval spending. Customers remain at the center of our business. Our integrated financial services strategy is founded on providing seamless financial services to our customers. Again, we have recently implemented changes in our operating model that are geared towards offering that seamless service to customers. Going forward, we look, we look to relaunching our unified customer service center that will address customer queries across all our portfolios of, of business, businesses. The operating environment in 2020 accelerated the rollout of our digital strategy, which was critical in ensuring that customers continue to access our services remotely, given the social distancing and face-to-face -face restrictions put in place to curb the spread of COVID. As part of this process, we have made additional investments in our technology infrastructure, which will enable us to scale our digital offerings much faster going forward. We have, however, achieved the following notable milestones in 2020. We have redesigned our public websites in South Sudan, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Uganda, while we will complete the Kenya uh, website in H1 of 2021. This will enable us to offer our services more seamlessly online. We rolled out a USSD solution for all our businesses in Kenya to manage sales and services. And three, we rolled out an investment chatbot on Facebook, Arifa, which simplifies the process of starting our, your investment journey with us. We rolled out an end-to-end -end digital funeral offering through our partnerships with some of the leading banks in Kenya. We will continue building on this foundation as digital is a core pillar in our integrated financial services strategy. Underpinning all of the above are the skills we have in the group, coupled with a strong, well-recognized brand, not just in East Africa, but across the continent. 2020, 2020 has been a challenging year. COVID came to our shores at the end of quarter one, and as a consequence, of the lockdowns and curfews, economic activity slowed down with focused contraction across all the economies in East Africa. In Kenya and Rwanda, we also saw significant depreciation in the local currencies. The, local, the currency depreciation in Kenya was especially significant for the group as we saw a significant loss in exchange due to the dollar-denominated debt. 
Progress had, a, had already been made to reduce the dollar mismatches, which reduced the potential losses we would have suffered. All NSE indices were down in 2020, driven largely by foreign net selling, as participants diverted investments away from emerging markets in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. The bulk of the market downfall was experienced in quarter one as the first cases of the pandemic were reported. Subsequent quarters exper experienced relative stability or recovery across all indices. As a result of the pandemic, a lot of focus was placed on ensuring, ensuring resilience of our balance sheet. The business focused on cash collection and conservation, and we saw liquidity significantly improved. We also, however, took a more stringent view on receivables on our balance sheet, and as a result, impaired a number of receivables. On the business front, the short-term business continues to suffer from intense price competition. And while insurable and insured assets continue to increase, premium growth has not kept a pace. This picture remained in the same in 2020. However, as we, start, as we stated last year, we will continue to price fairly to ensure that we do things with long-term sustain, sustainability in mind. We are grateful to our brokers, agents, and customers who continue to support us. In 2019, we turned the tide on a declining top line, with GWP being flat on prior year. We are pleased that in 2020, we have shown good growth, in fact, growing faster than the market in both the medical and non-medical lines. Our life business, however, took a lot more strain. We saw a decline in premiums, driven by lapses and surrenders as our customers took financial strain from the lockdown. As you may be aware, a significant part of our life portfolio is retail. On the property front, rental rates seem to have started stabilizing after the decline in rates over the last three to four years. There are still some risks to the outlook given the COVID situation, but we are pleased with the progress we have made on properties, as I will take you through later. Turning to the financial performance, we reported a loss before tax of one, one billion compared to 3.2 billion in 2019. The loss is attributable to the balance sheet cleanup exercise I alluded to earlier. Given the pandemic, we took a more conservative view on receivables whilst reserving uh, in our life business increased. I will talk to this in subsequent slides. On the positive note, one top line grew 8.8% overall. This was despite the cash flow challenges that our customers have faced, coupled with the depressed overall market growth. Two, we did not, we did not have a repeat of the significant fair value property losses we took in prior years. In 2020, we have seen some stabilization in the property portfolio values as rent rentals stabilized while occupancy improved in Kenya and South Sudan. Consequently, total income increased 20% year on year. The above was, however, offset by increased operating Offset by, by increased interest, interest, interest income following, following higher cash balances. After, After a number of tough years, years with uh, the, the property business, we are, we are pleased, pleased to report that we finally achieved a small profit. profit. This, this is, is off, off the back of occupancy improvements, rent escalations, and, and a drop in LIBOR and the CBK, CBK rates coupled with, with, with debt, debt management uh, uh, in initiatives. initiatives. On the, On the next, next slide, I'll cover in a bit more detail 
the performance of the various lines of business. Our general insurance businesses across East Africa had a strong 2020 top, top line, line performance with medical growing 4% while the PNC businesses grew 20%. This, this was, was despite, despite the pandemic. pandemic. The, growth, the growth came from both higher business retention levels as well as new business growth. This is, a, is as a result of the service improvement initiatives we have put in place over the last three years, which are beginning to pay off. Our motor claims assessment turnaround times have improved significantly, which has enabled us to settle claims within uh, our SLAs. In Uganda and Rwanda, we have seen very good top-line growth. Rwanda in particular benefited from the IT investments we have made over time, our, as our staff were able to seamlessly adopt to the work from home conditions brought on by COVID. The life business, however, had a difficult year. Top line declined by 400 million as our advisors were unable to have face-to-face -face interactions during the height of the pandemic. In addition, faced with financial difficulties, surrenders and lapses increased during the year as did group life schemes suffer as some employers laid off staff. In addition, we lost one large scheme. On the property front, the, the table on the, on the bottom left shows rental income on shareholder properties over the last three years. As can be seen, rental income increases came through in Kenya and South Sudan, whilst in Uganda we have seen a decline over the last two years. The table on the bottom right shows property occupancy levels at year end. Occupancy levels in Kenya have increased from 43% three years ago, and today the UAP Tower building is full. This has been achieved under very difficult circumstances. The market conditions remain difficult, and we stay close to our tenants. Similarly, in South Sudan, occupancy levels have doubled over the last three years. In Uganda, the property market remains challenging, and whilst occupancy remains at reasonable levels, rentals have declined, leading to the drop in rental income. The drop in rentals is relative of, rel reflective of market conditions, with a number of new buildings coming on, on stream. Our Nakawa property, however, remains a much admired high-grade property. Turning to operating expenses, operating expenses grew 24% in the year from approximately Kenya shilling 6 billion to 7.4 billion. The major drivers of the increase are the balance sheet cleanup and more conservative view adopted on receivables. Increased software running expenses following uh, our investment in a new financial reporting system at the end of 2019 also added to the increase. Included in the other bucket are also one-off expenses incurred in order to enable staff to work from home, including additional connectivity costs. We are pleased, however, that as a group, we had already invested in the infrastructure that enabled us to work from home, and therefore the change was relatively smooth. The group's liquidity has significantly improved over 2019, However, debt reduction remains a key objective of the board and therefore no dividend has been declared for 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arthur. Um, we have already started receiving uh, some questions um, and I'll start with uh, one that uh, comes from one of the uh, participants in our investor briefing this morning. And the question is, with the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown measures still in place and the ripple effect on the economy, what do you envision for the life business? What do you envision for the life business? The second question, which is from the same person, are there measures or products you are introducing that can help turn around business fortunes from this front. That's from the life business. Okay. Uh, Jerem, do you want to take that question? Sure. Take my mic on. 
Yeah, thanks uh, for that uh, question. So I think during the, the earlier presentation, uh, part of the issues that were mentioned as having um, negatively impacted the life business was the restriction in movement. I think it was mentioned that uh, in the course of the year, we did introduce a digital product, and the essence was to respond to inability of advisors to have face-to-face -face conversations. We have also enabled our sales team with certain digital tools uh, to allow them to engage their customers um, you know, around their products and solutions during this period. Suffice to say that as a company and as a group, we have remained, uh, we have made a commitment to continue providing uh, cover uh, you know, to our clients even during COVID. So we do not exclude COVID-related, uh, you know, cases uh, in our life products. So I think those are some of the measures that we put in place uh, to ensure that the business, uh, you know, succeed uh, in the midst of a pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jerry. Um, a second question has come through, and this is in respect of the other lines of business or our business uh, generally. And the question is, what are the strategies which we have put in place to ensure the ongoing turnaround initiatives are effective? Thank you very much. Um, as I mentioned, our, our strategies are hinged, our strategy is hinged around three pillars. Um, one is the foundations which uh, I think we've made significant progress on. Uh, the growth part uh, of our businesses, of, of our strategy, is hinged around the digital, uh, digital engagement, uh, as well as customer centricity. Uh, the customer centricity part of the strategy is driven by our IFS model. As you know, as a group, we have uh, uh, within our portfolio, all the different financial services uh, products, ranging from banking, uh, asset management, short-term and long-term businesses. We think that driving uh, cross-sell uh, cross opportunities through those different businesses gives us significant scope for, for, for growth. On the, on the digital front, uh, as we have mentioned, we have made uh, a number of, uh, we have made a, uh, significant progress. And in 2021, we will be coming through to the market with a number of different products offered seamlessly online, focusing mainly on our general insurance uh, business, as well as uh, the life side. The life side, we've already launched um, the funeral services product, which uh, initial take up has been uh, better than we had uh, anticipated. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Um, there is another question. Uh, you have mentioned that uh, the 2020 loss before tax was just over 1 billion compared to a loss of um, uh, approximately 3.2 uh, billion a um, billion for the same uh, period in 2019. What led to this? And will this year be any better from where you sit? Alon, do you want to? Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think if we, if we look at uh, the, the main reasons for the change in our, or reduction in our loss from the prior year to the current year is we took quite a large property portfolio impairment in 2019, which obviously didn't recur this year. We actually had a small write-up in our properties. Um, we also had um, some, as mentioned earlier, some uh, cleanup we had to do from a balance sheet substantiation perspective, which obviously increased our, our cost, uh, our cost base. So that will offset some of that, uh, the the losses that we did not incur on the in, um, property in the prior year. Um, and then uh, on our, our top line, we had, we had uh, some growth, which obviously contributed to a better performance uh, from uh, a bottom, bottom line perspective. Thank you. Uh, just to add on to that, I think the, as, as Arnold has mentioned, uh, 
the loss in 20, 2020, uh, in 2020 is driven by a uh, couple of one-offs which will not uh, which are not likely to repeat in the current uh, current year the main ones being the balance sheet cleanup as as he has mentioned uh, as well as hopefully the <coughs> investment loss of about a billion uh, from the NSC uh, downtown in quarter and quarter one so uh, we are optimistic that we will continue to build on the improvements in performance uh, and 2020 w and 2021 should see an, an improved uh, result thank you Arthur Arnold we have another question this one is on our digital transformation journey and the question is Digital transformation is at the core of any business, especially now with a pandemic hitting hard. What products have you rolled out in the last one year? Uh, and what do we have lined up to ensure customer service is enhanced? What impact will this have in the business? And what challenges do we envision with the changes brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic? So. What products have we rolled out in the last one year? Uh, and what do we have lined up uh, to ensure customer service is enhanced? What impact will this have on our business? And what challenges do we envision with the changes brought about by the pandemic? Thank you. Can I ask uh, David Courier to mention uh, some of the improvements in this business? And Jerem could also talk to the life side. Yeah. Uh, I think it uh, is a reality that uh, digital now has become the centerpiece in the turnaround of businesses as the, as the customers' needs and the impact of COVID evolves. Eh? So we have, we have remained very resilient as a business and taking the case of general insurance in particular, I would give an example of medical business where through partnerships with, um, with the corporate partners that are experts in the digital uh, service delivery, we've been able to introduce uh, solutions to our medical customers such as meds on wheels, e-consultations and the like. So we have made, um, we have brought convenience to our customers through those digital solutions. And that has eased the, the interaction between uh, customers and doctors, customers and um, hospital service providers, uh, medical service providers and the like. So we have made, uh, taken a big stride in that and we are seeing very positive uh, responses and feedback from our customers. In terms of the whole value chain of uh, service delivery, as uh, our group CEO mentioned, we are doing an overhaul to ensure that uh, ultimately we will achieve end-to-end -end digital uh, customer service delivery. And that's the journey we are now, we have strongly taken. And I believe by end of the year, we will have achieved major milestones in that respect. Thank you. Yeah, just to mention a few, a few things on the life side. Uh, earlier on, we did speak into the last expense digital product that uh, was rolled out. Um, and as earlier mentioned, the performance of that product is trending uh, well, ahead of plan and ahead of expectations. So that's something that we will continue to support and ramp up. Uh, it gives our customers opportunities to interact and uh, buy the product uh, online without any human intervention. Uh, we continue to look at uh, opportunities for rolling out other simple products that may not necessarily require advice and are not complex and customers can easily you know, purchase uh, digitally. Uh, but the core uh, for us uh, from a life perspective, given that life is drives long-term uh, savings element, is to 
you know, bring on board tools that allow our customers to self-service and also interact uh, with their products and how they are performing. Uh, I think uh, for those of you, if you go to our website and uh, type Dream Enabler, Dream Enabler would allow you actually to have access uh, to your portfolio and how your products are performing. Uh, it gives you an indication of whether your policy is in force, whether you've got premium areas, and the benefits that are sitting under that product. And it also allows you to interact with us, um, you know, without uh, any uh, human intervention. So we will continue to invest uh, in digital, especially to drive and improve the customer experience around our long-term savings products. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, team. Uh, the questions keep coming uh, fast and furious, and we are grateful for the participation of all uh, who are um, on this briefing. I'll take the other one that is aligned to COVID-19 uh, before we move on to uh, listing. The impact on business due to COVID-19 uh, you have mentioned, is the effect the same across all the markets you operate in? Or are there differences in the markets? What would you attribute to any differences that there may be? Thank you. Um, the, the impact has been relative to, economically has been relative to the stringency of, of the lockdowns. Um, but also we've seen the impact on our businesses being different. Um, the life business has been impacted differently to the short-term uh, insurance businesses. Um, in terms of the different markets, uh, again, the pace of adoption of uh, work from home and, and the tools to work from home has, has uh, has been uh, part of the reason for the differences that we have seen. So if you take uh, a market like, uh, like uh, South Sudan, uh, rel relatively slower than, than the rest. Um, uh, Rwanda uh, started off uh, slowly in terms of work from home adoption, uh, certainly from, uh, from our competitors' point of view. But uh, as is typical with Rwanda, very fast to, to pick up. Um, and within a month of the pandemic, we saw our competitors had already adopted uh, work from home, um, uh, work from home strategies. Um, the, what we've also seen uh, in, the, in the different businesses, uh, on the medical side, we've seen uh, greater adoption, increase in premiums, as people have taken their health uh, a lot more seriously. And we've seen that across uh, Rwanda, Uganda, and, and Kenya, with uh, good growth on, on the medical, uh, medical side of the business. Um, on the life side, uh, unfortunately, uh, the business has taken a lot more strain uh, from mortality, increased mortality, uh, as a result of uh, deaths uh, within, um, uh, within the different portfolios, uh, particularly in the group life uh, schemes. So very different uh, impacts on the different, uh, different businesses that we have. I think overall, if I think about our group and how the pandemic has impacted us, probably uh, emerged better off, given that the general insurance side of the business is better, uh, is bigger than, than the life side. Thank you, uh, Arthur. Um, a question has come through. Could you please shed color on the muted trading of the share? And any uh, and delayed listing on the uh, NSC, any timelines affiliated with the same? Thank you. Um, we 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 are making efforts to try to um, raise more awareness about the trading platforms. Uh, 
We are reaching out to our investors where possible, uh, and we will continue to make efforts to encourage uh, our shareholders to trade their shares on, on the OTC market. In terms of the listing, um, we've, we have said that uh, there are two things that will drive that listing. One is uh, the turnaround in the, in the performance of the business, and I think we are making good progress to, towards that. Uh, but secondly is market conditions. And in the last uh, couple of years, market conditions have actually not been very encouraging for uh, a listing. Uh, last year, uh, we had uh, the COVID uh, situation, which I think will continue with us uh, for the remainder of 2021. Um, when we get to a point where we have a reasonable track record of, of profits as, re as is required by the stock exchange and uh, market conditions are, are, uh, are right. Uh, we have the support of the board and uh, the majority shareholders to uh, list and the intention to list remains. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Um, and thank you, each and every one of you. We haven't uh, seen any other questions and um, uh, appreciating those questions that have come through. I'll hand back uh, to Mbugwa MC for the day. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've come to an end of the investor briefing. Thank you for your participation. Have a lovely day. Thank you.